today we're going to be looking at this incredible invisible force that's always around us and can't be blocked. It's magnetism. Magnetism is this incredible invisible force that exists all around us at all times. Now, we know that this force exists because when we feel these magnets, we can feel them snap together. Or turn them around and we can feel them repel and, and push away from each other. But other than that, it's completely invisible. We can't see it at all. So how can we better understand a force that is completely invisible to us? Well, let's do a demonstration. This here is magnetite. It's the strongest naturally occurring magnetic uh, mineral on the planet. It's made of iron oxide. And because it's so magnetic and it's this fine powder, it'll actually align and show us the shape of magnetism. Now, if I shake it a little bit, it should line up better with the three-dimensional magnetic field. Now that you see this, look at its shape and see if you can draw the shape for yourself. Let's make a little model. Now, if you look at the magnetite here and you look at the shape of the magnetic field, you should just see two very distinct sides and sort of linked in the middle. Now, Every magnet has these two poles. We call them dipoles. They have a north pole and a south pole. Now you can tell the difference because when you put magnets together, they'll either snap together or they will push against each other. So those are two very distinct sides. What's special about these magnets is that they always will have a dipole. Now if I cut a magnet in half, I will end up with two smaller magnets, each with their own North Pole and South Pole. There is no way for me to cut a magnet and only have one pole. You always have the dipole. It's pretty incredible because really nothing can get in its way either. I have a magnet here in my hand. My hand seems to have zero effect on me moving this magnet around. My hand's not getting in, in the way of this at all. Magnets are incredibly fun to play with. Now let's do an experiment. I want you to figure out what different materials are attracted to your magnet. Now, I want you to take your magnets and go around your house and see all the different materials that are attracted to your magnet. Now, make sure you do not bring your magnets near any electronic devices. Magnets can affect electronics, so please keep them away from your electronic devices. Other than that though, check around all the different materials around your house. What do magnets stick to? I found a few items around my house like scissors, this is a binder clip, and these are paper clips. All three of these will attract it to my magnet. I can pick them up and they stick very well. Now, not every material does. Does it stick to wood? No, not at all. So, a lot of people think that metal, all metal must be magnetic. Well, that's not really the case. I have here is a piece of metal. It's a metal uh, pan. It's made of aluminum. And this is definitely not magnetic. So not all metals share this trait of magnetism. So what do? Well, out of the 120 different elements on the periodic table that we know of, only three have this trait that are attracted to magnets. We call it ferromagnetism. And those three are iron, nickel, and cobalt. All the magnets in the world are either made of one of those three metals or an alloy of one of those three metals. People often like to look at neodymium magnets as the strongest magnets in the world. Now, they are. They're incredibly strong, but they're not made purely of neodymium. They're actually a neodymium iron alloy. We just call them rare earth magnets. And yes, they're incredibly strong. Now that we figured out a few materials that are uh, react to these magnets, that stick to these magnets, I want to teach you how you can make your own magnet. So this, is, this process is called inducing a magnet. So what we're gonna do is take your pair of scissors and take your magnet. Now with one side of your magnet, I want you to rub it one direction on your scissors 10 to 15 times. Now, 
the more times, the stronger you'll, your magnet will be. So 10 to 15 is usually sufficient, but if it's not strong enough, do it a few more times. Once you're done, try to pick up one of the smaller pieces of metal. Just like that, I've turned a pair of scissors into a magnet. Call it inducing a magnet. Now, today, magnets are used in almost every piece of technology we have. Magnets are incredibly useful, from your computers to your smartphones, tablets, uh, toothbrushes even have them. Um, a lot of things have magnets in them today. But that wasn't the case in history. Now, a long, long time ago, magnets were pretty much useless until somebody figured out how we can use them to navigate the earth. Now, why do you think that we call the two poles of a magnet, the North Pole and the South Pole? Well, that's because the north side of the magnet is actually the one that points north. And the south side of the magnet is the one that points south. Now, why would the magnets point north and south? Well, that's because earth is one huge magnet and it has a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole. Now that one big magnet actually protects us from a lot of different harmful particles and rays coming from the sun. And you can even see those as the northern lights. How can we figure out which side of our magnet is the north pole or the south pole? Well, what we're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your magnets, this is a piece of packaging foam, and we're gonna put it on water. We use the packaging foam because it floats. I'm putting it in a bowl that is also not magnetic, so it won't affect this experiment. I'm gonna place this magnet here, and as I make sure it's balanced, and as it goes, it'll align itself with the Earth's magnetic field. Keep your magnets away. If I pull this one close to it, this clearly affects the experiment. So making sure that your magnets are away from your experiment, it will align with the only magnetic field it feels, which is the Earth. So this way is north. Now I also know this because behind me is the ocean and that's west here. So this way must be north. That means this way must be south. Now, what I want you to do is take your magnet and put a little piece of tape on the north side. Here, I've painted this side blue. Now I'll show it one more time. Put the blue on the south side and as I let it go, it'll turn. Now this piece of foam is a bit big, but it'll always align up to the north and south poles. I want you to mark two different magnets. The reason is, is because I want you to discover for yourself which side of the magnets like each other and which side of the magnets try to run away from each other. Is it the north pole and the north pole like each other? Or is it the north pole and the south pole like each other? Now, take your two magnets and figure it out for yourself right now. Okay, now this is my North Pole up front, and this is my North Pole in the blue. Now, if I take the two North Poles, oh, they do not like each other. They are fighting me, they're resisting, we call that repelling. Now, if I turn one of them around, say the blue one around, they snap right together. So, that means that the North Pole of a magnet and the South Pole of a magnet are attracted to each other. So opposites attract in magnetism and the likes repel. So North Pole will repel the North Pole and the South Pole will repel the South Pole. All right, the same principle that you use to find the North Pole and the South Pole of the magnet is the same principle that humans have been using to navigate the globe for centuries, using a compass, a compass that always points north. Those compasses that you can buy, at least not the ones in your phone, uh, are made from a small magnet floating inside of a liquid. No matter where you are on Earth, your compass will always point north. If you're ever lost in the woods, make sure, always bring a compass with you on your hiking equipment because it might save your life. As always, happy sciencing.